Hey everyone, it's Ty Warner with Tyke Engineering and uh, Gleason Kiss Off Tech Support. I want to go over a, a, a little review today or a little bit uh, kind of a how-to on setting up planetary pins and bearings for analysis using Kiss Off. Um, a lot of times we use Kiss Sys, uh, you know, with, with our planetaries, like here would be a planetary design and Kiss Sys, all the bearings and shafts are all already there. Um, but we can do it in Kissoft too. So if we open up Kissoft and just um, double click on our planetary gear example right here, you can see that we've got a design. If you go into details, I mean, all the, the it's, a, it's an example design. So the reference profile, tolerance and strength, all of this is already defined here. Um, in the basic data, if you go to details, you can see we have a rim thickness coefficient. Uh, maybe we want to do a internal external diameter. Maybe I want to make this diameter like 12. I don't know. Um, and say OK. And then when I update this. OK, where? No worries. Internal toothing. OK. Um, we're using ISO. No calculation. We're not going to do calculation for tooth length fracture here. And uh, we're not going to do this stuff either. We're just going to, oops, we're just going to run it. There we go. So this is our you know, base planetary design. Uh, I only turned those off because there were some uh, standard uh, warning notes about lubrication thickness and that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but here I have my example. So I'm going to, I'm going to save this. I'm going to do a file, save as. I'm going to go to my <clears throat> simulation. I have this here already. I'm just going to click on it and save it over it. And now I've saved that file. And pretty much I'm done here now. Like I'm done with the planetary. I've done all my work. I've put everything together. I've got all my loads. Um, if I go to my graphics here and I do 3D graphics, I can look at the whole system. I can run this. And this is what my system looks like. I've got a sun gear couple planets. If I go to my uh, strength tab and I look at my reference speed and hit this plus button, I can see that my internal gear is set at zero. That's my ring gear and that's what I want. So the ring gear is stationary and the pin and these um, and the carrier is spinning. Okay. Put that in there. Actually, we don't even need that up. I'm going to open a second window and I'm going to go to my uh, shaft module. So if I were to look in my modules, I'd be here in my shaft calculation. Okay. Go back to my element tree. So with a planetary, if I don't have bearings on the end of the shafts and the bearings aren't in the carrier, but I'm going to run bearings or bushings on the pin itself, it's a simple thing. I'm going to click shaft one. I'm going to call that the pin. I'm going to add a shaft, shaft two. I'm going to call that the gear body. All right, because that's where my gear is going to go on. I have to connect these two bodies. On the outer contour of pin one, I can add a cylinder. And let's make that diameter eight. Uh, let's make it 16 long, so 8 millimeter diameter, 16 long. I'm going to add bearings onto this. I'm going to add either right click, I can add a support, or I can highlight my bearing and add a support. Okay, so bearings, support one, support two. I'm going to make sure I label these one and two. All right. If I want to see those supports a little bit better, I can drag this bar and make them bigger or smaller. Okay. Now, if I want to move supports and forces, I have to right click in the area here, go down to options, movable forces and supports. I'm just going to move support two to this end. I'm going to move support one to that end. Maybe we just make it a millimeter there. Okay. 
I haven't finished my support definition. Um, one of these is going to be fixed. Maybe it's pressed into the the carrier, and the other side will be kind of free. We're going to actually we can do it. We can actually make it a, an own input, and maybe say that there's no tilting, right? It's not going to tilt anyways, but we'll just call it free for now. So we're fixed on this end, and this end is just held in a bore. We'll say it's just kind of a, a slip fit. And that's it for the pin. On the gear body, we need to add an outer contour. And we can add that here, or we can right click and add. I'm going to make this 8 millimeters long. Okay. And I'm going to have a diameter of 20. Looks That's probably fine. Okay. And then I need to put an inner contour on here. Right here. And maybe that inner contour is... Uh, maybe it's 12 or something. I don't know. We'll give it a 14 millimeter diameter. And then you can just size that through. Okay. Because we're going to put a bearing on here. I want to move this gear body to the center of my pin. And if I highlight it right here in the element tree, a button, a little white indicator comes up. I can, I can click on that. And I can just drag it over. Now we can see I'm four on this side. Four on that side is centered. Okay. The gear body also needs to have gears on it, right? We need to put that planet on it. And we just go down to forces and we add a cylindrical gear. And we're going to call this the sun, uh, sun, sun dash planet mesh. Now, the reason we saved that other file is because I want to read that in. So if I click on read data from file and I go find this thing, my simulation results. I need to define that I'm looking for a planetary gear and I highlight this this uh, planetary set I just made. When I open this up I want the first gear pair which is going to be the sun and planet and I want the second gear which is the planet. Okay, It brings in all this information and we want that mesh position to be zero so the sun is this gear and the mesh is right here at zero. And because we already did our movable forces and supports, we can move this over to the center of our design right there. Okay. Next, uh, we need to add a second gear mesh on here. Because we have the sun-planet mesh reaction forces, we need to add the planet ring gear mesh forces. So planet ring mesh. And we're going to read that data in from a file. We're going to go find it in our simulation. We're going to find our planetary gear set. We're going to open that. And now instead of the first gear pair, we want the second gear pair and the first gear, which is a plant of the planet. And we're going to move it over in position. Okay. So now we have both planets on here. Uh, attached to our gear body, we have our pin supports located. The last thing we really need to do is, uh, oh, and I should mention on this planet ring, we still need this position here needs to be zero. Because it's, you know, this would be the planet and then the ring gear would be out here. So it's this mesh point right here. So it's zero and zero for the planet on that. The next thing we have to do is we need to connect the gear body to the pin. And we do that by going to connecting elements and we're going to add either a joint. So if you're doing a bushing, you put a joint in here. If you're doing a roller bearing, you put a roller bearing. The roller bearing inside is going to be the pin and the outside is going to be the gear body. And now we can roll that in. And let's make this a, uh, let's see what we have here. This is an 8 diameter with a 14. Do we even have that bearing? We probably do. Sure. That's kind of short. Um, maybe you want two of them. Or maybe you want to do a, uh, a needle cage. OK. 
Okay. 8, 11, and 8. So now we can just come in here and make this diameter 11. Okay. And now we have connected the pin to the gear body. The gear body is carrying the, uh, the gear loads. Uh, we're going to get a warning, I'm sure, because I don't know what the speed is here. And so if I run this, ah, 493.8. Okay. So what this means, what this means is, this is my speed, 493.8. I'm going to go to basic data, and instead of 1500, I'm going to make that 493.8. Okay. And if I make this counterclockwise or clockwise, it's going to be just, um, I'll, I'll get a warning one way or the other. So I think we're at clockwise. Now I run this, speed is zero. Actually, not zero. The pin is zero. Gear body. We're going to make this pin zero. Um, I just set this up here. If you right click in here, this is the element editor, editor for the system. Okay. Now, if I run this, there. So now I've got a static safety for my pin for my my connecting roller bearing. Um, my B10 life is forever, hundred thousand hours, and my static or this is my stiffness according to uh, ISO 16281 right here, my calculation method for the bearings. Um, it tells me I'll get 377 thousand hours of life on here. Okay. I didn't do anything for the shaft strength. Uh, our default is 743 infinite. Uh, we can make this be a limited life, 20,000 hours, we'll call it. Um, in the basic data, you can define the, the life required for the roller bearings right here. Okay. This is the 10%, so it's a B10 or L10, however you want to call it. And then the tolerance field you can define for your bearings also. Uh, consider gears as mass and stiffness. Yes. If I go to my graphics, I can look at my deformation diagrams. I'll run this again. I can see how far things are moving. They're not moving very far. There's not a, a lot of load on this. It's a short pin. It's only eight millimeters. And the gear body is steel. So if I go up here to my properties tab, I can kind of look at some things here and there. So I can look at you know, if I turn the pin off and the gear body. So the gear body is actually displacing, uh, looks like about 20, about 22 microns. Is that right? 18 microns, it says. So this whole thing is basically taking up the, the, the radial clearance of the roller bearing. And then you have your arbitrary plane, like, you know, Turn the pin on. The pin is deflecting a little bit. You can see that. Not very much. Um, so that's that's where we can set our planetary pin information. If I go to graphics and I want to look at this in a 3D display, here's my 3D display of my my uh, planetary and my pin, my bearing. If I Go to my properties tab. I can I can turn the scaling down. Let me make this five percent, five percent. Right. I think I can even. I thought I could animate this. Oh, I can right here. See, there it goes. There's my planet spinning. Now this is the resultant loads and forces and the relative speed of the of the uh, the, the the planet to the pin. So it's not taking into it is taking into account the the speed differential with the carrier, but this is just a, a subsection of the of the planetary that we're uh, looking at here. So so that is how you would connect um, through Kissoft a planet to a pin with a bearing. Uh, again, like I said, if you wanted to do a bushing instead of a connecting roller bearing, you would add a joint. And then you would define 
the, the, the radio play in that joint, and then you can get some information on you know, what the pressure velocities might be and that kind of stuff. Anytime you highlight the pin or the gear body, you have this element editor on the bottom. You can change these materials. Uh, there's other stuff down here you can play with, heat treatment, that kind of stuff. Same with the gear body. Um, this isn't a very heavily loaded set, but you can see that uh, we can we can get life calculations and we can connect everything together. So that's what I've got for you today. Just a quick reminder that you can pull these sub systems and these uh, little um, elements of a, a planetary and work on them separately in Kiss Soft. Hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Appreciate that. If you have questions, uh, don't feel don't feel like leaving a comment. Uh, I normally try and get back to everybody as quick as I can. Thanks.